It's an important one. Second point is we are freed from slavery under the elementary, under the elementary spiritual forces of the world. We are sons and daughters of God. We are no more slaves. That's the most important point. To do the works of God, of light in this world of darkness, we need to have a mindset change from slavery to our sins and to the worldly passions and everything and discouragement. And we are changed from our status from slave to sins to the Son of God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Hebrews, you guys got to read the book of Hebrews. So powerful book. I'm just quoting because I do a machine reading thing. Um, Jesus, 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 uh, you know, the Bible says Moses was faithful in the house of God as a servant of God. And Jesus is faithful over the house of God as the son of God, not the servant of God. Jesus is faithful over the house of God as the owner of the house of God. Moses was faithful over the house of God as a servant of God. I am the servant. I'm a servant of God. But Jesus is the Son of God. He is the owner of the house of God. That's why the concept is, must be very, very clear in our mind. We're no more slaves. Because the devil will toss you back to the slavery once in a while, again and again and again. It's human nature. We live in a, in a fallen world. Even Jesus himself, God, I would say he was really distracted and really disturbed when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Getting ready to face the cross, he, he, he cried, he, he bleeded with blood, and etc. In fact, in fact, I think in the Hebrews again, there are many times Jesus cried out with loud cries, with tears to God the Father to save him from death. I was so moved by that verse. I recorded a talk on this, and I... I'm not sure I wrote an article on this or not. And we have no way to come to that. Have you in your struggle cried out with loud cries in your prayer to God and with tears to God? Have you? Maybe you have done it one or twice in your life. But Jesus done it many times apparently. It's not recorded in the Gospels, but it's written in the book of Hebrews. Jesus cried out many times with loud cries we tears. Oh my goodness. There's a son of God. So I'm like, oh, you know, that, that talk of mine got so many, many reviews. Because I think people struggle. People need encouragement. And, and I said, you know, have you ever come to that level of struggle? I'm telling you, the son of God himself apparently go through more struggles than we do. That's why we need to be free from slavery. Galatians 4, 3 to 7. Very important verse in NIV. Galatians 4, 3 to 7. Also, when we were under age, we were in slavery. Under the elementary spiritual forces of the world. Under who? Spiritual forces of the world. We were under age. Verse 4. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we may receive adoption to sonship. That's the key. Hallelujah. Our journey as Christians, folks, is not to be free from sins, just to, be, just to please God so that we can get into heaven. Our journey is, to, is, is, is the adoption of sonship. Our journey is into the family of God. We're not joining a club. Church is a family. Hallelujah. Church is not an obligation. Church is not something that you have to do on Sunday morning. Church is really the family of God. It's adoption. When the time has fully come, God sent his son to redeem us so that he adopt us into the son to, to become sons and daughters of God. God cannot adopt us if we are not redeemed. God cannot redeem us and without Jesus dying on the cross. And that's why Jesus has died on the cross. That's why Jesus is so magnificent, so glorious, so majestic, so powerful, so loving, 
All authorities on earth and heaven has been given to him because he deserves it. No one can match Jesus. Verse 6, because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls us Abba, Father. Done. That's it. Remember the thief on the cross? He called her Abba Father. He didn't, it's not recorded that way. But Jesus essentially is saying, you can call God the Abba Father now. You'll be with me to, today in, heaven, in paradise. Just like that. Just like that. Because you are his sons. Because you, you have been adopted to the family of God. And God sent the spirit of his son. Whatever that means. Holy Spirit. Spirit of his son. Spirit of Jesus Christ. I think, he, I think uh, Galatians, Paul, Paul wants to emphasize the fatherhood of God. That's why spirit of his son. And that spirit calls out Abba Father. Who cry out Abba Father? Not you. The spirit of the son of God inside you calls out Abba Father. If you call out Abba Father on your own, it means nothing. But if the Spirit of God is sent inside you, He calls out to God, Abba, Father. Such intimate. Verse 7, so you are no longer a slave. You hear that? You are no more a slave, but God's child. Since you are His child, God has made you also an heir. An heir. Now you have more. You have the inheritance, everything waiting for you in heaven. On, we are freed. Okay, so we were enslaved to the spiritual forces in this world before, you know, in the world before, flesh and spirit are fighting for allegiance. Our flesh is pulling us to one side, and the spirit of God inside is pulling us to the other side. Holy Spirit is working mightily only because we have been freed. Did you see? The spiritual forces of this world enslaved us. Don't ever be naive, think that it's just my own Weakness, I struggle. Yeah, that's part of the story. And bigger part of the story is the spiritual forces in this world uh, instigating your internal weakness to pull you to that. Who pulled Eve to, to satanic forces? Eve did not just come up with the, hey, I want to eat that fruit. God said, we should not eat it. You know, I feel like I just want to eat it. It didn't happen that way. Eve was... You know, he, he, she, before she fell, she was, she was perfect. But she has, she has a propensity opening a weakness she may fall. But that f causing her to fall did not come from herself. Come from the spiritual forces external, outside of her. It came in, the voice came into her and she responded. You see, you see what I'm saying now? So many, many pe people, theologians, pastors, preach that it is our own sins enslaved us. Partially correct. There's external power called the elementary spiritual forces of the world. Paul says in verse 3, we were enslaved under the elementary spiritual forces of the world. We are not enslaved under sins. Enslaved by what? Sins is an expression, is the result of, of the bigger power called spiritual forces. Jesus defeated death on the cross. Guess what? He did not only defeat the death. He defeated Satan. That's a real enemy. Death is an expression product of Satan. Just like our sins is an expression of our weakness, but the forces of darkness make it happen. So we need to deal with the forces of darkness. That's why the Bible said we are in the spiritual force of spiritual warfare. Okay, Galatians 5. Let me go fast now. Galatians 5, 16 to 26. So I say, walk by the Spirit. Now, this is the big. Walk by the Spirit, capital S. You will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Our problem is we gratify means satisfy our desires, our flesh, our sinful self. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit. And the spirit was contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But, you, but if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Dark Moon, a very big theologian, says this. The presence of God's spirit 
in the lives of believers, a mark of the new age inaugurated by Christ's resurrection, both guides them and enables them to obey God's will. So God did not just save us. God empowers, enables us to follow the will of God. They are no longer subject to the regulations that sanction the Mosaic Covenant. The Bible said when we receive the Spirit, no. okay, let me give you some examples of the Spirit. In the Old Testament, the Spirit of God came upon individual people at certain times to enable them to perform crucial tasks with divine ability. Ideally, however, all of God's people possess God's Spirit, but there are specific occasions like the Spirit of God came upon David. He was so mighty and powerful. He took down Goliath because the Spirit of God came upon him. Even King Saul started prophesying because the Spirit of God came upon him. When Samson, the Spirit of God came upon Samson, he tore, he tore apart a lion to do the will of God. And God promised that. Now, this is, a big, this is important. God promised that at the future time of blessing, this will happen. And Jesus repeated in John 14. And P Peter announced it in the day of fulfillment. For example, for example in uh, John chapter 14, 16 to 17. I will ask the Father. He will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive because he neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. The, Jesus promised, I will send the helper. I will send the spirit. I will send the Holy Spirit to you. You see, in the Old Testament, there's just spots, occasions when it's like David, like Samson, like Samuel, like Abraham and all this. But now, Jesus said, I'll pour out my spirit upon you. And, but we don't get it every moment still, you know. There are spontaneous moments. That's why you have to walk in the Spirit. Acts 2, 15 to 18, uh, uh, um, Paul says, For these people, as Luke wrote this, sorry. And for these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's the third day of the day. But this is what uttered through the prophet Joel. You know, and the Acts of 2, the day of Pentecost, God poured out the Spirit, and people were speaking in tongues, and, and people were like petrified what? The tongues were actually different languages of these foreigners. Verse 17. And in the last days shall be God declares, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters will prophesy, and young men shall see visions. That's God's promise. 2 Corinthians 1, 21 to 22. And then Romans 10, 16 to 17. But you have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, hearing through the word of Christ. See, you hear the word, your faith rises up. 1 Corinthians 2, 3 to 5. And I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Paul said, my preaching to you is not just eloquent words, but word of wisdom, but it's a demonstration of the Spirit of God and the power of the Spirit of God. That's called walking the Spirit. That's how we're going to do the works of the light. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 We constantly thank God you received the word of God which you heard. You accept it not as word of man, but the word of God which works in you believers. So are the blessings of the new age inaugurated by resurrection? Doug Moore wrote, awaits his return. But the spirit has been given as a deposit. We have the deposit now. Paul finds incredible Galatians experience so much can you imagine that after all these things, they go back and like a dog going back to the poop, to the, to the vomit. So Paul was really, really wanting them to walk in the spirit. That's how we're going to do it. Christ's return, you know. Okay, let me just close with today. The acts of the flesh uh, in... Uh, that is in uh, verse 19 to 21, Romans 8. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, 
envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, there's some good news here. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh and its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. That's a, that's a conclusion. Walk in the Spirit because we have crucified. We go for all the fruit of the Spirit consciously. God will give us the energy and the motivation and the power to do it. Only way to do it is in the Spirit of God, of what Christ has promised us. We cannot do it on our own. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you.